Hi, I'm Father Daniel Duplantis. In the 20th century, a new movement from the Far East captured the Western mind. Since then, the intersection of Christianity and martial arts has generated both conflict and harmony. In between, there remains many gray areas. In my new book, Jesus in the Dojo, I combine timeless theology with modern catechesis to provide a clearer path of reconciliation between the Christian faith and the practice of martial arts. You can find my book, Jesus in the Dojo, available now at most booksellers. Life is a quest for logic and reason. It is a quest to find balance between science and faith. Life is a quest for knowledge and understanding. But most importantly, it's a quest for personal discovery. Whatever your quest, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Welcome to Quest. Hi, Jenna. Welcome to the Quest Podcast. Thank you for having me. Jenna, you are a keynote speaker, a best-selling author, an event facilitator, an MC, a moderator, a host of the Jenna Bank Show, and you're on a mission to help people live into their fullest potential. Did I encapsulate that right, the core of what your, your world is? You sure did. Thank you. <laughs> Well, you do. And I probably didn't even mention all the things that you do. I just, I don't have that much time in the podcast, but I want you to start by telling the listeners a little bit about you. Tell tell everyone how you got started in this line of work. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's actually a very interesting path that led me here. And ultimately I think it comes down to truly just a mindset and believing in yourself. You know, if I really break it down to that, because I shouldn't be here if you think about it logically, right? Like uh, my path was very um, difficult to say the least. I write about my story in my book, uh, which is titled, I Love Me More, How to Find Happiness and Success Through Self-Love. Um, you know, I had a very traumatic and troubled childhood and uh, ended up leaving home at 14, got my GED at 17, went right to work. Um, ended up getting pregnant and married at 19 and became a divorced single mom at 22. And here I am in the working world trying to support myself and my little one as a single mom with no college education. But I had a lot of ambition and drive. And, um, and so it was very, uh, very much a determination on my end. I figured if I can make it this far um, and have gone through as much as I've gone through, I, there's, there's, you know, nothing to lose, right? Nothing to risk. And as speaking as a woman, a lot of us women, there's statistics around this that we tend to not even apply for jobs. For example, if we don't meet 100% of the criteria, well, that wasn't me. I learned very early on, you just go for what you want and, uh, you know, be confident, have confidence in yourself. And I had a lot of confidence in my abilities to get through a lot of stuff by that time. So, you know, got in the corporate world, worked my way through, ended up becoming uh, director of business development, director of sales and marketing, running departments for other companies, and then eventually started my own business, sold it in 2020, uh, 2019. Um, simultaneously, I, wrapped up, I ramped up a real estate venture while I had that business running. Um, and that, uh, you know, just pretty much uh, how I started on the path to, you know, success. And then from there, once I sold my business, it was right when 2022, uh, the pandemic hit in uh, 2020, when I decided to go ahead and start writing my book. Um, I thought, you know what? Actually, there's a, there's a moment in time that I write about in the very beginning of my book when I realized that everything boiled down to uh, self-love at the root of it because I had to really believe in myself, love myself, choose myself, own my value, own my worth, not look for external validation, all the things that were that are defined as self-love, which I actually didn't know until I started researching for my book. But I wanted to help others find the path to success through self-love and so that got me to do all the research start writing about my own journey 
And then that got me into speaking and then starting my show. And that's why I'm where, where I am today. So hopefully that sums it up in a nutshell. It was, uh, it's an unlikely story, but I'm really happy to be here. Let's uh, go back and talk a little bit about your younger life. You know, you mentioned leaving home at 14 and that you had a traumatic upbringing. Um, I'm curious, what part of the country did you grow up in? And did you have a big family? What Did you grow up spiritual, religious? What what was that early life like for you? Ooh, lots of questions. Well, um, I bounced around a lot. I know we weren't in the military. Um, I don't know why, honestly. We grew up really poor. Um, family of seven, so I was the oldest of five kids, but the oh, wow. only child from uh, my my father's first wife. And um, we did grow up very religious, a very strict religious uh, Pentecostal, I think, Christian home is what you call it. Um, and yeah, we bounced around. I mean, I grew up in Oregon, Florida, California. I even lived in the Netherlands. Like we lived, uh, I, I lived in the Netherlands actually from 19 to about 22. That was after I got married. But um, I have lived everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Did any of those factors contribute to you wanting to leave home early? Just that kind of that childhood bouncing around? No, I, uh, you know, when you're used to it, you're, it, it just, becomes the way of life. I, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, though, it did prevent me from settling down and really having any close friends because how can you make friends when you're always the new kid in school and True. not staying put, right? And back then, you didn't have cell phones, internet, any of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, did you feel that only having like a GED for a while was hurting you? Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I it, it did, it did, make me feel shame it was a conversation that i didn't want to have i didn't share i really didn't tell anybody because it, i saw it as a, a weakness a flaw right and so with somebody who had ambitions especially in their career um i wanted to be successful and that's something i certainly hid and certainly as you know my friend group expanded and most of my friends had college degrees. Um, I definitely didn't mention it, especially in friend groups. I really hid from it. And I talk about that in my book about um, the power of owning your story. It took me later in life to really own that and, and own it as part of, you know, I, I succeeded despite all of that, right? And mm -hmm. that's something that is just part of my story. It's part of who I am and to hide from it is to hide from sure. my truth. So, sure. Yeah. You and I are close in age and I kind of remember, you know, uh, like I, there were no members of my family that had gone to college until my younger brother. Like he was the first mm -hmm. one of like the whole Fisher family to go to college. And yeah. it just wasn't something that like we saw in the Midwest a lot. Yeah. And it was new. It was new for people to go to college in, you know, the in the 80s. Right. Really. <clears throat> but um, I do remember that a person with a high school diploma that was very acceptable out the workforce for a long mm. time. Like you'd just be a guy with a high school diploma, but a GED was really looked down upon for whatever mm -hmm. reason, you know? And, uh, and it was just like, it was such a terrible stigma attached to that. Yeah. In that day. Now it's kind of like, if you only have a high school diploma, you're, it's the, it's the same thing, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, crazy. Um, let's Actually, talk, well, I was just going to say GED, if you think about it is, worse than a high school just a high school diploma because i didn't really even get that it was a general was a, a general education diploma i didn't yeah. make it through high school i quit and got the general well, education I, ba diploma. I barely made it out of high school i will say i barely barely got out of high school myself <laughs> so proof here that we can be self-made people that's, that's right, right. <laughs> you know um but you know today people are getting master's degrees and working at the post office that's right so, you know, mm. so the degree, uh, college degrees are becoming meaningless in a way. You know? you know, it's interesting when I hear, I just the other day I heard someone uh, on a television reality show saying how she went to college at least four years, got her at least a bachelor's degree, and she was working as a stewardess. Hmm. And I'm thinking, this is just so interesting that that's just like the path to life as a young adult. You have to get your high school degree, then go to college and then get a, a job, whatever the job is that we, even if it doesn't really require a, high, a, a college degree, right? Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's that. There's people, you know, with bachelor's and master's degrees as managers at Walmart, mm -hmm. you know, like it's just that's people go where they can go. And AI is probably going to deteriorate this down even more, mm -hmm. you know, taking away jobs from people. 
What's really cool, though, and, and I'll stop with this uh, on this subject because I'm sure this is not what the show is about, but I think it's really interesting to see how HR departments now are opening up their minds to talent that might not meet your traditional or is not even traditional, but current criteria of having a high school diploma. If you can bring to the table the equivalent of of um, you know focus in you know particular areas of software development or coding or whatever, and maybe you're YouTube YouTube trained. It doesn't matter if you got to, you know if you've gotten to a point where you can sustain that particular skill set in a job or whatever. Or maybe you had your own company and you learned along the on that on the path to entrepreneurship. That is now they're now opening up their minds to considering those who are self-educated, which I think is yeah. remarkable. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Let's talk about your book. So your book is called "I Love Be More: How to Find Happiness and Success Through Self Love." Was this a biographical book? Tell tell everyone about the book. Yes, but it wasn't meant as a biography. It was meant as a roadmap uh, to help you learn to love yourself more. And I use my own personal stories. Um, and I, it was hard. Let me tell you, it's not easy to be that vulnerable. Um, but it is really healing to do so. And now I talk about it very openly. But trust me, writing about it was was tough. But I did that in order to be able to share how I overcame challenges in my life by choosing to put myself first, by choosing to put my happiness and my needs first, even as a single mom. And showing that, you know what, and not only my own stories, but bringing in research and other thought leaders in this area and other spiritual leaders that I look up to and their wisdom and guidance to show us that not only is it not selfish to put ourselves first and love ourselves more, but it's essential. It's essential for all yeah. of us. For sure. For sure. When did the book come out? It was International Women's Day. So March 8th, 2022. So it was almost two years ago by the time this comes out. Did you go around and speak and talk about the book? Or is that you still keeping this active in your repertoire? Because you do go out and you do conferences and you do speaking events and keynotes. Tell, tell everyone a little bit about that. Absolutely. Um, like I said, I became a speaker after I the book came out. Um, and so or I think I said um, that was kind of the path. The book came out. Then I started training to speak because I knew I wanted to do it. But I like to do things as good as I can. And I knew I needed some professional help. So, yeah, I started speaking about the book. Um, I did podcasts even before it came out to kind of get my speaking chops wet a little bit. And then uh, got on stages. Uh, most recently, I was on a stage in front of 600 women in the payments industry, bringing the power of self-love to their stage um, and to the leaders that were there to convene for their annual summit. They got 650 copies of my book to give away. And it's just that is a really wonderful way to get the message out there. I'm speaking um, all over the place right now. I've got a lot of uh, booked talks for my unleashing the power of self-love talk which is a great companion for the book so yes this is has really helped launch my speaking career is there another book in you yeah i think so yeah. <laughs> actually i'm working on one right now it's a, a, a fiction series um, with my writing partner and it is about embracing um, it, it's actually going into this whole world, uh, this imaginary world, the world of Tiger Feather. And Tiger Feather is this goddess. Uh, she represents the divine feminine. Her brother, her twin brother, Thunderclaw, is the divine masculine. And it's this, they're born of Mother Earth. And then it's this whole world where, um, you know, her, her brother sought to defeat her and locked her away for thousands of years, yada, yada, yada. She's released and now, you know, these modern um, young people um, are introduced to her and she helps guide the way to their own um, feminine energy, feminine empowerment. And um, it's in this really cool, fun, magical, mystical way that we, you know, delve into this story of Tiger Feather, Thunderclaw, the Everlast. And so that book is almost finished. And it's a planned series of 10 books. And this is for young adults 
men and women actually, but for the young adult genre. And then of course I definitely have another nonfiction in me, at least one more, so. Yeah, that's great. That's I saw the term tiger feather somewhere. I can't it's in my book, it's in my book. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I, I gotta remember to ask her about that. And then I couldn't like find other stuff about it. So I was like, well, maybe I'll take the question out, but I'm glad you brought it up. I love it. That sounds it's awesome. It's percolating. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's percolating. You know, it actually, the idea for it spawned from the last chapter of my book where I, I try to help readers who haven't really thought about self-love, never heard of the term, haven't, don't really understand how to implement it in their lives to give them some kind of a way to connect with this idea of embracing your inner warrior goddess. And that's the name of the title of the chapter is embracing your inner warrior goddess. And if you in certain situations where you, you don't know what to do, you can kind of think, well, what would my inner warrior goddess do? And it really clearly lays out what she would do. She would say no when she feels like saying no. She would fearlessly, you know, protect her boundaries and her energy. She would, um, you know, will take care of her happiness and her well-being, make it a priority. Uh, you know, there's just a whole list of things that she would do. And so when you find yourself, you as you, not finding the strength you can look to this inner warrior goddess within to find the strength within you so that spawned tiger feather and it is about embracing your inner warrior goddess but in this fun magical kind of way well you have your work cut out for you with that many yeah. books yeah <laughs> you have the next decade planned <laughs> that's right <laughs> Uh, it is fun to to indulge in fiction worlds. I've built those myself, and it's, oh. but it, their time sucks. <laughs> I can't get my like nonfiction out because I just am oh. always like wanting to live in this world I create. You know, I think we create these perfect bubbles, and why wouldn't we want to live in those, right? Right, exactly. So it's fun to get into those into those into those stories. It's let's, so exciting. Let's uh, talk about the Jenna Banks show. Okay. So this this is on YouTube and uh, other outlets, I think on Roku and some other places. Tell the listeners a little about the Jenna Bank Show. At first, I thought this was a video podcast, but it's not really a video podcast, right? No, mm -mm, no. it's hard to, you know, in my bio, I think I have podcaster in there, but, you, but usually I just say host of the Jenna Bank Show because it's really hard to uh, explain. When you say TV show, it sounds like you have something on cable, but... It's a streaming platform where my show is broadcast. It's on yeah, Roku, Google Play, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV. It's on Binge Networks TV and actually on a whole bunch of tons and tons of other small streaming networks you've probably never heard of, like um, like the local channel. I think it's called the local <laughs> and all these other platforms, which I'm surprised to see the numbers come in where people are viewing the show. Um, but it's really cool. So basically, I shoot it on video, like a, like a video podcast essentially. And when you do video, you've got to add in some fun editing and stuff like that. It's just a little bit of a different format. But um, but really, I'm all about helping women. This this show is geared towards women. Um, of course, anyone can benefit by listening, but sometimes I go into some topics that are a little more geared towards women, um, really about living life to your full potential. And it's typically lesser known um, pieces of information, advice, tips, tools, etc., that you just really didn't know, but that can really help you live your best life. That's great. That's great. I love that. Um, you know, we talked a little earlier about uh, kind of how you grew up religious. Is there still religion or spirituality in your life today? A hundred percent. Yes, absolutely. And I do divulge some of that in my book. I'm a very spiritual person. I read spiritual texts all the time. Um, I just don't assign it to any one religion because I can learn from the Bible. I can learn from Deepak Chopra, Eckhart Tolle, um, even ancient, ancient, ancient wisdom. Um, I want to I want to learn. I just want to learn and grow and 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 I think spirituality for me, my personal opinion is that it's unique to each of us. Um I believe we're all, you know, we're all divine beings and um we're all part of God. There is no separation. There is no in between. There doesn't need to be any broker between us and God, you know. We're all we're all created equal and um we're all divine and perfect perfect exactly as we are. We don't really have to change a thing. 
You know, if we need to, for, if forgiveness needs to happen, it needs to happen from us. We need to sure. forgive ourselves. You know, for we need sure. to give ourselves compassion. We need to give ourselves love. And when we can give ourselves those things, guess what happens? We can give it to everybody else. But we have to give it to ourselves first. Right, for sure. I ask this question a lot to, to my guests. You've heard the term mind, body, soul. If you were to put those in the order you wanted in importance, what would it be? For me, it's body, mind, soul. But mm -hmm. what order would you put it in? I mean, off the top of my head, I would say soul, body, mind. The mind yeah. really should follow. It, it's really here to support us. Um, unfortunately, too many of us, including myself for far too long, lived live in our minds. And I once did too, our logical, masculine side of our our being um the heart and soul is the feminine side i had to really work hard to drop into my heart um but i think our soul is what i mean i know our soul is what is eternal hmm. and um, our body and mind are temporary um and uh just you know here for a very small amount of time so um our soul is absolutely number one in my in my opinion. Good. I'm always curious what order people put things in. Jenna, what's your daily self-care routine? Hmm. You know, I, I talk about this all the time. Journaling is huge for me, mm -hmm. um, but there, I, I'm not going to give one more weight than the other. I, I have what I call my joy list. It's just a small list I'll show you and everyone uh, I'm showing right now this list of, I call my joy list, which is just a small list of simple things that get me charged up it's little things that make me happy that don't require any thought cost time uh, or, or it requires time but no cost or true thought process you just have the things that really lights you up and what lights me up is journaling walking when it's nice outside listening to music um you know exercising um reading a spiritual book i mean these are things that always light my soul up talking to a friend and um, this is part of my self-care routine. I do it daily. I don't do them all daily, but I try to do at least one thing for my list um, because how we show up in life um, requires us to prioritize. You know, if we want to show up in life from a place of power, energy, love, we have to take time to prioritize what lights us up. It's really important. Yeah. And what about um, fitness, nutrition? What's that self-care routine like? You know, I get in, it's, it's top priority for me. Definitely part of my self-care routine. Um, it's a habit. It's a, exercise is a habit. Eating right is a habit. Um, just like we're in, we can be in a habit of not eating right and make and think that we're gonna make an effort to eat well and, and then that doesn't work because the habit is the other. You have to, if you wanna, take care of your health and well-being you have to be in the habit of exercising and eating right on the daily um sure. so whole foods are of the utmost importance to me i rarely touch a packaged food item um and pay attention to ingredients and where things come from um and then exercise at least four days a week is my baseline yeah do yeah. you have a guilty pleasure Ah, uh, sure. Wine. <laughs> I guess wine would be my That's guilty good. pleasure. <laughs> That's good. That's a good answer. What's yeah. next for you? What do you have coming up? Oh my gosh, what don't I have coming up? <laughs> I like to keep myself busy. Um, you know, I am really diving full force into this facilitation and moderating um, part of my career now. I found a real joy in doing this. It landed landed in my lap uh, not probably last year, I guess, for the first time. And I absolutely love it and decided, you know, again, I, if I love something, I'm going to do it the best I can do it. So started training and getting more gigs in that area. So I really see myself doing a lot more really awesome interviews. Um, I, I, I love doing that, moderating, facilitating events, just really helping, helping bring my light to others to hopefully bring the light, you know, help them shine their light more. Yeah. Um, and so make it less about me and being on the stage as much as helping others 
be the best that they can be. And however I can do that, that's I see more of that in my future. Well, Jenna, you lead by example with all of that. So certainly I wish you the best of luck with it. How can people find you out there on social media and the interwebs? No, oh, thank you for asking. Um, my website is jenna-banks.com and that is really the best place to go because there you can find my show, uh, all the platforms that it's on. I'm also on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and all of that can be linked on my website and yeah, all this, you can learn more about me there. So thank you for asking. It's interesting to see, uh, you know, how much easier it is to promote yourself in the age of social media. You know what? Absolutely. And it's a lot more work, but it's a really wonderful way to connect with people. And you know what? I also want to mention that, um, I know I talked a lot about my book, but I'm all about providing whatever value I can for folks. And if you are curious about self-love, but aren't quite ready to buy a book about it yet, I would encourage you to sign up for my free weekly email self-love tips and reminder series. It's called Love Notes to Myself. I started doing this last year as a just a follow-up to anyone who's read the book to keep reminding them, keep you know, you know, this isn't a one and done. There's a lot of work that goes into loving yourself more. And here's some really good follow-up tips and tricks for that. So you'll find the sign up for that on my website as well, which is jenna-banks.com. And it's completely free, no sell selling or anything, just something I give out to help you love, love yourself it. more. Do you ever do a uh, Zoom workshops? Do you ever have opportunities for people to get to you virtually? Um, you know what? I'm doing more lives lately, so definitely on Instagram. Follow me there, and I'll, you'll get some lives. Um, but I do the show, and um, it's like those are almost like mini workshops in a way. But yeah, I I do hope to do some of those in the future. So thank you for asking. Well, Jenna, I really appreciate you taking the time today. Great interview. I wish you all the best. Um, when I'm down south, maybe we can get coffee and uh, we can we can talk about this in more detail. I probably that. need to learn to love myself. If you ask any of my listeners, <laughs> they'll probably say, definitely uh, meet with Jenna because you need to get some self-love. I would absolutely love that. I, I hope you do reach out if you come this way. For sure. And you have a good day and we'll talk to you soon, okay? Sounds good. You too. Thanks for having me. Take care. Bye-bye. Metacortex Publishing hopes that you've enjoyed this presentation. Please take a moment to listen to some other podcast offerings from Metacortex Publishing. Hi, I'm Father Daniel Duplantis, a Catholic priest, martial artist, and host of the Karate Priest Podcast. Have you ever wondered what the church teaches about different topics? Are you a martial arts enthusiast or just someone who wants to learn more about martial arts? I'd like to invite you to join me and many guests on my podcast as we cover topics of faith, everyday living, and martial arts on the Karate Priest Podcast. Hi, everybody. I'm Amber Rose, the Religious Hippie, and I host the podcast A Catholic's Perspective. Join me every two weeks as I release episodes targeted towards helping young Catholics navigate their ever-changing secular world while staying strong in their faith. Whether you are a Catholic or not, all are welcome here. So if this is something that interests you, feel free to tune in. You can find A Catholic's Perspective on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. I hope to see you there. Bye! Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please be sure to rate and review this episode. This podcast is produced by Todd Fisher and Anthony Smith and is distributed by Metacortex Publishing. This podcast is copyright. Any previously trademarked or copyright content is used by permission. Information and opinions stated in this podcast should not be construed as medical advice. Please be sure to visit the official website for Metacortex Publishing at metacortexpublishing.com or find us on social media for other unique content.